What a night here mm. from start to finish. Eddie, have you got your breath back? Because oh. we haven't. Unbelievable. I mean, from six o'clock, me and you were sitting over there with Lundy against Sparrow. It was an absolute barn burner. Selecki against Rosado. Luke Campbell was excellent. Um, Katie Taylor, what can you say? And that was just sensational. John O'Carroll was outstanding. I mean, I probably only had him two rounds down going into the 11th. Oh, did you? And I was thinking he was having momentum, but Tevin Farmer won the last two rounds anyway. And I just thought, I, I looked at the shots landed. I, I think they had him landing more shots. I know that can be irrelevant on the scoring, but still, I thought John O'd done so well. He couldn't have tried any harder. And what an atmosphere in here tonight. I have to say, Adam, it's been that much excitement. I ripped my trousers getting into the ring tonight. I don't know whether that was a sign of a good night or of a sign of too many Something cheeseburgers. Else, yeah. Philly well, steaks, steaks, but, yeah. but it was uh, it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, um, these are the kind of nights that you you hope play out. But you know, you need a lot of luck in matchmaking and in boxing. Sometimes everything gels, and tonight was just one of those perfect nights. And Matt, you had a bit wider to Tevin Farmer with the, the skill set, and, and that showed on the cards. But I think what Eddie's alluding to is the, is the immense effort that John O'Carroll put in. In fact, everyone put in tonight, but Carroll's challenge was, um, well, it was quite something. Yeah, I had it similar to the judges, but I mean, his, his work rate and his tenacity and his desire was just unstoppable at times. He gave it absolutely everything and some. You know, he, he'll be going to bed tonight, a tired man, but so will Tevin Farmer, because John O'Carroll made him fight every second of every round. But the thing is as well, Matt, how much John O's stock has risen. You know, Lou DiBella just said, wow, they're going to love we'll him over him here. Yeah, and that's the part of the game. You know, if you come over and you put in an effort like that, sometimes no disgrace not being able to beat Tevin Farmer. But I tell you what, he's all action. He's only had 16 fights. He's never really boxed at that level. Jono, has he? No, has it, was he big, it was a big step up for him, and it, you know what? He, 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 he proved that he belonged at it. He can, he can come again. Yeah. He'll come back. That was his first defeat. He goes back. He's still 26 years old. He's still improving. No doubt, John O'Carroll can definitely come and fight for a world title again down the road. We had something for everybody, didn't we? Raymond Ford yeah. looking really good. Luke Campbell giving a terrific really performance. The middleweights and the, the drama in the last sort of couple of rounds of that. But I think we've got to finish on Katie Taylor. You know, it was, a, it was an incredible performance from start to finish. And she just continues to get better and better, you know, with that lovely attitude she's got and, and the respect she had for Rose Volante. And I guess the question for you, Eddie, is can you deliver the bassoon fight in June? Yes, I, I believe we can. Um, we're pretty close. Um, Pessoon won last weekend, quite an impressive stoppage victory. Um, June the 1st, Madison Square Garden on the Joshua card. What better setting for the undisputed lightweight title? I think obviously Katie's got the WBA, WBO and IBF. Uh, Pearson has the WBC, the Ring Magazine belt will also be on the line for that fight. It's everything for Katie, you know, and uh, it's a tough fight, I've got to say. Pearson was an outstanding amateur. She's got a, a tough style to beat. She can punch as well. But, you know, Katie's come through another test tonight and... Uh, you know, she's, she's just a, a dream to work with, Adam. An absolute dream because she goes back to that changing room. It's just, when am I fighting next? Literally, you know, like, she's going home. I said, you're going to go to Ireland now for a, a rest just for a few days, and I'm going back straight back into camp. You know, it's like, it's but it's what she lives for. And that undisputed fight is everything to her. And that's the kind of fight that's going to cement her legacy in the professional code. Is she still your favourite? She will always be my favourite because... You know, listen, we've got some amazing fighters on both sides of the pond, but you can't help but admire someone with that much dedication and passion for what they do. It's absolutely everything to her, everything. And uh, she's a remarkable individual. You go into her dressing room before the, before the uh, fight, you can hear a pin drop. You know, you almost don't want to go in there. And it's just she's so driven, so driven. And again, everybody leaves here tonight talking about Katie Taylor every time she fights. And by the way, Volante was tough. I mean, in the early rounds, I didn't like Katie trading up. I didn't think she had to, but that's what she does. She has that style. And when she sat on Volante's chest and started to work the body, Volante couldn't deal with her inside. And her inside fighting is actually my favorite. That's what I love watching about. She shouldn't do it that much because she can box on the outside and beat everybody. But she loves to stand in the pocket and trade. And when she does, 
It's like watching like a, a seasoned Mexican, you know, male veteran. That it is. Is she your favourite too? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, <laughs> boy, she, I mean she, and, and like Eddie says, when she stands in the pocket and goes to trade, part, part of me is thinking, get back on oh, the German yeah. box, but the other part of me is like, go on. You know, don't, you feel entertained because, uh, you know, she can do it all. She can box and she can fight. She can punch shot. She can counter punch. She's an all-round fighter. And finally, Eddie, it's been a great night in Philadelphia and so much more ahead in the next couple of months. It's just non-stop. It is, and uh, the UK fans will be pleased to know we're coming home for the next two weeks, Adam. Liverpool, uh, sorry, London next week at the Copper Box. Charlie Edwards defends his world title. Joshua Boazzi goes for the British title against Liam Conroy. Lawrence Acoli against Camacho in a British and Commonwealth unification. Lewis Ritson moving up to 140. Jason Quigley also on that bill. Shannon Courtney making her professional debut. And the week after in Liverpool, one of my favourite cards for a while, Liam Smith against Sam Eggington, Anthony Fowler against Scott Fitzgerald, Robbie Davis Jr. against Joe Hughes for the British and European titles, David Price against Sheffield's undefeated Cash Alley, uh, Farrell against Bowes for the Commonwealth title, and that one's just on Facebook. I mean, do we give you some value or what, Adam? I'll tell you what, it's pretty good, isn't it, uh, <laughs> at lining them all up.